Hello, everybody, indeed. Welcome to the Metanorn Mini Talk for Gargantia on the Virtuous Planet, Episode 6 Festival. I'm Jero, joined by Fo Shizzle. Hey, what's up, everyone? And it is just the two of us this week. Uh, it was going to be a big party, it was going to be a big festival, but uh, unlike people in Gargantia, they did not show up. <laughs> yep. And there might be some reason they didn't show up. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that as we talk about the episode. Uh, it starts off with what triggers the festival, which is a swirling galaxy. This is when two sea currents intersect, as it mentions in the episode, and y- you see it forms a ring, and fish are much easier to catch. So, you know, Gargantia, life on Earth is pretty easy, definitely much more so than fighting the Hede Hells. Yeah, definitely. So, interesting things with the, I guess, the water. Cause I was, I was wondering mm-hmm. about that for a while. Like, what's the sea life like in the, in the, in this world? But we'll talk about that later. But yeah. with the fish thing, it was kind of interesting seeing that. I guess this, a natural event this happens to come nearby, like a festival thing, so they can mm-hmm. <laughs> catch these fish. Pretty interesting. Yeah, it's like uh, almost like some office that finds any excuse to party or relax. Like <laughs> last week, it was the wind stop. So and, and oh, right. this week it's now catching fish and just any reason to party. Yeah. Um, so with the fishing thing, Red is trying to find his own thing to do. He doesn't want necessarily want Chamber to help. He wants to find something that he can do on his own. So he gives fishing a try and rides in another Yunboro. But because it's not Chamber, it doesn't really work out so well, and it kind of looks uh, embarrassing for him as he can't swim in the water with it. Yeah, he's just, like, giving orders to the machine. He's not responding. Mm-hmm. He's just like, why, why, why doesn't it respond to my voice? Like this. <laughs> not knowing it's, like, it's pretty much you have to do it all yourself. It's yeah. pretty much not automatic. It's manual for, for the most part. Yeah, I was just going to mention the word manual because Red said something in the... And engineer guy goes, you know, we don't have that, so, you know, tough luck. <laughs> good, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> and then uh, you know, Chamber, he tries to fish on his own and basically minces every single fish that he catches, basically uses his gravity to create a sort of a big sort of a, a water sphere to catch mm-hmm. all the fish, but uh, no dice on good fish. It makes you wonder, it's like, you know, this world's supposed to be, like, not very really popular with humans, and I guess the animals just have, I don't know, when they get called those fish and you kill them all, I'm like, how, how much fish are in this the water, I mean, mm-hmm. in this current time? But yeah. Yeah, it was kind of funny watching them screw that up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of sea life on, on the show. And then we see that Red works with Chamber together, and also some of the other people that are using you and Boros to actually make a big cat show. Teamwork is the, the the theme of that uh, little scene there. <laughs> Not really. Oh right, but, yeah. Uh, it definitely shows that if he works with these people, he can accomplish his goals. The goals of people, mm-hmm. but solo or by themselves, they kind of they almost need almost I almost think they need to watch the other people do it first before they're jumping into these these things. Mm-hmm. It's almost like with the with the moving the boxes, like he couldn't like watch the other guys before doing it. Mm-hmm. You know. Just observe for like a day, and then next day do it yourself. But yeah, I guess that's what he's supposed to learn. Yeah, and as as we're talking about some of the things that went on in this episode, it's really hard to draw some overall conclusions from the episode because it's kind of it's kind of stuff we've seen, and it doesn't really feel that important. It's kind of just like red is adapting to this new culture and something we've kind of seen before yeah we've seen it like you said the last i think three or four episodes have been kind of the same Mm -hmm. it's it's red trying to figure out his plot place in this little in gargantia Mm -hmm. and he's he wants to find a job purpose and all this like that yeah and for some more fan service as if swimsuits wasn't enough last week we have the festival with the three younger girls on the Gargantia, basically dressing up in outfits and doing some dancing. Yeah, some belly dancing stuff. Yeah, which to me felt kind of weird because in the the scene they show that he's he's hanging out with people, a red's hanging out with some other people, 
getting some food, and you have the three girls dancing. And you have a lot of like very obviously older gentlemen kind of like watching yeah. these three young girls dance. And they're like, I'm like, you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking to myself, like, but maybe they just don't really, you know, care about that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that, yeah. in this world. But, you know, it's not new. Yeah, and you know the animation quality in that scene it was very mixed. Like when it was far away, the character designs weren't that great. But once they got into like zooming in on the belly or the butt or whatever, you know, of course that was very detailed. Right. Um, it was. <laughs> Al- Almro from from Anavision had a great tweet. Uh, you, I'll have to link it in a post where it says about to watch Gargantia Six, and it shows a picture of a guy with his pants on, and then the, the side picture pants are coming off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, who knew Gargantia would be so fan servicey from mm-hmm. the uh, previews and such? So, uh, Pinion goes along with Red for a dinner and orders a nice meal, and then Bellows comes over and tries to recruit Red to the group. She, of course, salvages and he does some fishing. And they bring out a big a dinner, which is a big octopus. And Red just freaks out on it, thinking it's a Hidey Alice, and pulls out his gun. And they're like, this is food, and it's delicious, and here yeah, I'm eating yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, dude, calm down. But for me, seeing these two kind of, it's kind of weird. You know, in the beginning, at least we didn't see, uh, Pinion didn't like Red in the beginning. Bellows mm-hmm. didn't think much of him either. And now suddenly they're coming around to like, oh, well, yeah. we want to join our little, mm-hmm. our little rec- thing here. It's like, what are they up to? But I guess maybe because they see the potential in the red with his, you know, robot. Yeah. Almost to the point where I think they're not really trying to be friends with him. They just want to use mm-hmm. him because yeah. of what he has. So it's yeah. almost, it seems like they're, they're they're trying to use him for their own gain. But yeah, I knows? agree. Like the relationship that they have is yeah. very different from what Amy has with him. Where yeah. you see that Amy really does have take an interest in, in him. Because, and, like, Pinion didn't like him, you know, and now he's just like, yeah. oh, you're, you're cool now. Hey, buddy, man, come on. Br- right. Seaweed bread? Come on, you gotta <laughs> eat something real good. Right. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a, a scene afterwards where Amy and Red are watching a, a Galaxy Current, and she does a dance for him. There's a brief moment there where the, the lightning strikes, which I think we remember from the last time we saw a Galaxy Current in Episode mm-hmm. 2, where he thinks... You know, there's some enemy, and at the time, the threat was minimal. Yeah, and when that scene happened, I've never seen Twitter people saying, a bunch of people were saying that that's technically a death flag for either Amy or, I don't know if they killed Red off, but mm-hmm. it, it's a death flag for one of them because, I mean, I was talking to my brother about this, and it's like, Red's beginning so used to this, you know, lazy life where he doesn't really have to rely on his weapons as much. Mm-hmm. So it's like, Almost to the point where he might be getting like laxed in his uh, military side of him. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, you, I could see a scene where you know he's kind of just you know, laying out, or just kind of relaxing, and something bad happens. He won't have the reaction time to mm-hmm. respond quick, quick, quick enough to save someone. But who knows? And with Highway in the last podcast, there were some differing opinions on whether Urobochi Gen would actually go through with killing a character and there's still some uncertainty left but you see these episodes where red is adapting to the culture and becoming more friendly with these other people and building these friendships that there could be some moments later in the series where those friendships are ended by death and rage overcomes could overcome some people oh right definitely sadness or whatever they they could definitely do the shonen type the typical thing where something dramatic happens which pushes mm-hmm. the character to do something, you know, to fight back or change or whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm I'm not necessarily predicting that'll happen, but oh, yeah, if either. it does, it'll be really interesting to see how a character like Red reacts. A character who's so as we've mentioned often on this podcast, so ingrained in military life as opposed to a lot of other characters that have piloted mechs and shows where they're young and they're inexperienced and death just causes them to just lose it and just go nuts on on enemies and do as much harm to themselves as the enemies that they're fighting. And that, and I remember when he 
when they played the flute and he remembered this past, like, I mm-hmm. almost wonder if how he deals with, with trauma. You know, it seems like he just blocks it out of his mind and doesn't think about it. Mm-hmm. But for all we know, they could have wiped his memory, you know. Yeah, and and also a moment about him playing the flute was that Grace, the that whatever animal thing, had a very negative reaction to it. Oh, all right, it did, yeah, I remember that. So the last scene of the episode that we see is that he's basically chosen to work with Bellows. And good what good guy, choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what guy wouldn't want to work with Bellows? <laughs> so while salvaging underwater, they see a Hide Owls appears, and Chamber basically mentions that there's 99.7% uh, compatibility or something. I'm having trouble remembering the exact subtitle. And the episode concludes with Chamber and the Hie de Owls charging at each other while underwater. Yeah, that that, that makes me wonder if maybe it's not exactly a Hide Owl, whatever. It's maybe, a, yeah. they could even word it as maybe an ancestor or a, you know, a type of Hide mm-hmm. Hide Owl that yeah. doesn't really rely on space, but it's an underwater version. Or it could be a different form of those kind of creatures. Yeah, it, it's probably not, it could be not something to be feared. Mm-hmm. But it could be sort of the precursor for things to come going forward. Like, I wouldn't expect this to be, like, a major fight next episode. I would expect right. things to be done even before the opening or unless they recap the ending as the opening and then they go into the, the new stuff into episode 7 after the opening. But, yeah, I'm almost wondering if it's the creature that Bellows mentioned before they showed the squid. That they're gonna eat the octopus because you said something about you think that's scary. Wait till you see it. You know, I think you've worded like squid something or whale oh, yeah. squid or something mm-hmm. like that. Which almost makes you wonder maybe that's what that creature is that he's fighting. Mm-hmm. To him, kind of his reaction to the, the octopus. I can see the same thing happen with Chamber. Maybe they both react differently. It's not technically hit yells at all. Mm-hmm. It's just a local creature they have, and yeah. But with the salvaging thing, I could see. I'm kind of picturing where he's going to probably find parts for that spaceship mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. yeah, and the salvaging is an obvious choice in terms of story because with salvaging, you're able to discover new things underwater and discover maybe a little bit more about the Earth, a little bit more about the people that left the Earth, like the like the people that are fighting in the Galactic Alliance for Humankind, so... You know, as, as maybe as he does a little bit more of that, there will be more things to discover about the overall history of the series. Yeah, it makes me think of a little bit of Robin from One Piece. How with mm-hmm. that character, she's an archaeologist, but she's discovering all these stuff in the past, which is important. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that, that, like you said, maybe Bellows and then find something that he can relate back to his his time. Like, oh well, I know where this is from, mm-hmm. and they yeah. might even hint towards that. The plant might be overrun with hilly owls somewhere. That could be. Side yeah. of the world or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, obviously he could talk with Dr. Oldham some more and maybe put together some pieces about uh, space and Earth and such. Yeah, then you got Amy's little brother. He could probably help out too with that. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. definitely have, I see where the story would be going now. So it's mm-hmm. just a salvaging thing. Yeah. Uh, so... Overall, uh, another episode without some real action. I mean, the most that we got was a pretty cool dive by Chamber underwater mm-hmm. and a little scene there at the end with the, the threat of the Hiede Owls, but uh, not much action again. Uh, I, I'm ready for stuff to progress forward with the overall story. I, I thought, uh, you know, as, as nice as it is to see Amy and the girls you know, shaking their hips and stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, you kind of want to see some real progression in the story instead of, uh, you know, too much world building. Right, and I think that's what... It might be scaring people away from the series right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, episode 5 was a beach episode. This is kind of a fan service episode. Yeah. And, like you said, not, I almost, almost want to say, like, robotic notes, there's a lot of stuff going on, but the progression is not really there right now. Mm-hmm. Stuff at the very end, which kind of hints towards, oh, now we're getting serious. So. Yeah. All right. So, thank you for listening to the mini talk on Gargantia. For Fosh, I'm Jero. We'll see you next week. See ya. Kimi no <laughs>
瞳にこの世界はどんな風